Am I shocked to hear that Symphony Williams, the CEO of Wizards of the Coast, is finally stepping down? Not at the least. This is quite a shock. On the other hand, it's not surprising in the least. Well, we got some interesting news today. Synthony Williams from Wizards of the Coast is actually stepping away. She is done with the company as of April 26th. I got a lot to say here, so do subscribe to the channel. I have covered Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro in intensively over the last few years of things going on in their company, how they've created an absolute debacle and debauchery of their open gaming license and many more subjects on the matter. So if you're not subscribed to the channel already, please do so now. Now, this is from Bell of Lost Souls. There's been many different articles on this whole situation. CEO of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro Gaming, Sydney William, steps down. The Wizards of the Coast president will step down ahead of the company's major launches, but according to Hasbro, the hunt for is on for a new successor. Now, I must note, we're about nine days away from the quarter one earnings report from Hasbro. And with the CEO stepping down at this point, days before that comes out, this is not good news. This is going to be a bloodbath that we have already seen with Wizards of the Coast. This means more people are probably going to get laid off from this company because I, when, when we went over the initial results, that's what happened. Sydney Williams, president of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro Gaming since 2022, will step down April 26, 2024. The news comes via a SEC filing originally picked up by Rascal News, which reached out to Hasbro about the unfolding resignation. Now, the SEC filing, this is something that they have to do to inform their shareholders, and that's why it goes out there. The move may come as a surprise with Wizards of the Coast celebrating 50 years of Dungeons and Dragons, in which they said pretty much anyone that was white is not allowed to play the game anymore, um, and the forthcoming release of the 2024 revision of the core rules. But according to a comment for, uh, from Hasbro, the parting seems to be amicable. Uh, what effect, if any, will this have on the fifth edition reboot remains unseen. Sydney Williams will have absolutely no effect whatsoever on the fifth edition reboot because she was just the CEO, the figurehead of it all. This is the CEO that talked about how Dungeons and Dragons was under monetized, which is what is here in the next one. Sydney Williams originally came from Wizards of the Coast via Microsoft Gaming, a move that highlights now both Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro have shifted their focus to emphasize on digital gaming, even though they canceled five digital games over the last little while. Uh, Williams drew some controversy from the D&D community when remarking that the brand was under monetized and had been working with Hasbro CEO Chris Cox, which used to be the CEO of, of Wizards of the Coast before uh, Brian Golder uh, passed away of cancer, uh, Chris Cox then took over for Hasbro. And they're developing a reoccurring spending environment for the vulnerable RPG. Uh, they also purchased D&D Beyond, which they're trying to use as a tabletop platform to sit there and now sell you parts and pieces of manuals for the game going forward. This is, I believe, the overruling uh, situation that they want to push. Now, the SEC filing is, is nothing major. It's a Form 8K. Um, it just tells on April 15th, Sydney Williams, president of CEO, uh, president of Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro Gaming, informed the company of her resignation, effective April 26th. This is normal for this type of thing. Now, when it comes to Wizards of the Coast, and uh, the last couple of years have been quite interesting, we had the open gaming license debacle, which had everyone screaming for the hills. Many people were canceling their D&D Beyond subscription and pretty much turning, turning away from Wizards of the Coast entirely for the Dungeons and Dragons. This is where Pathfinder, Rapaizo, and other like brands really did take a little bit more of a form and a chunk of the tabletop RPG world. Now, this also comes on the heels of Wizards of the Coast sending the Pinkertons uh, to confiscate Magic the Gathering cards uh, that were seemingly sent to someone accidentally 
uh, and they showed up at his door with hired goons to take them away. Also, we have Kyle Brink, but a Wizards of the Coast employee that tells that says people like him need to leave the game because he's white. It's absolutely ridiculous what we have seen in this company in the last little while. This is also where we have sensitivity and dragons, or sensitivity readers are going combing all the Dungeons and Dragons books and saying, this needs to come out, this needs to come out, this needs to come out. Absolutely ridiculous. People are adults, they can play and they can learn from what they play with. Also, all what I spoke of earlier with the bloodbath, the layoffs hit Wizards of the Coast hard. And in particular, everyone that had worked on from Hasbro that helped Larian Studios come together to make Baldur's Gate 3 with the fifth edition rule set were gone. The entire team was wiped out. Larian still existed, but everyone from Hasbro that greenlit anything for Baldur's Gate 3 were gone as well. And on, on also, the illegal one ring that was found up here in Canada because it would have been seen as an illegal lottery. And after speaking to many people about that in government entities, they said there's not much they could do about it because it's in the US, they run in the US, and it would take a lot of public interest to actually spark a debate over this sort of situation. These are just a few of the highlights, a few of the videos that I've covered over the last little while for Wizards of the Coast. I am in no way surprised to hear that Symphony Williams is now leaving the company, taking her golden parachute and getting the hell out of Dodge because Hasbro is in a very, very messy place. They've been throwing things out of their vault, putting up transformers that they've had in the vault and just throwing them out there. They've also got Chris Cox talking about how they're going to use AI and pretty much get rid of artists. And you have to wonder in the long run if Wizards of the Coast is for sale. If someone's going to pick this up or if Hasbro themselves are for sale. Where is this going to go? Cynthia Williams is leaving a legacy behind her that is absolutely deplorable for Wizards of the Coast and this is where we are now. You gotta wonder, you gotta go back to certain things that are there. There was rumors at one point that Dungeons and Dragons was going to be sold, but we don't know where that is right now. Anyway, I've been your proud Canadian Phoenix. I'm signing off here. This is some interesting news from Wizards of the Coast. I think it spells disaster around the corner. And if you were working at Wizards of the Coast or at Hasbro, just start looking for a new job now because I have a funny feeling after the quarter, quarter one results, you're going to see another big chop. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>